Hi everyone, this lesson is on ingrown toenails. So ingrown toenails are also known as onychocryptosis. If we would actually look at this word, onycho refers to nails, crypt refers to hidden, and osis is an abnormal condition. So this word actually means an abnormal condition of a hidden nail. So ingrown toenails or onychocryptosis is a condition involving abnormal growth of a sharp piece or pieces of nail into the periungual skin. The periungual skin is going to be the skin on the side of the nail. Now there are two main etiologies as to why ingrown toenails occur. One of them is going to be tight fitting footwear. So if a patient wears very tight fitting footwear, that's going to be a potential cause of this condition. And then the other one is excessive nail clipping or clipping nails very short. So if patients clip their nails very frequently or cut them very, very short, that is going to increase the risk of ingrown toenails occurring. Ingrown toenails are actually the most common nail issue encountered in clinical settings, and they are more common in teenagers and young adults compared to the rest of the population. So the main issue with ingrown toenails is improper fitting of the nail plate into the nail groove. So the nail plate is the nail itself, and the nail groove is where the nail plate fits in to the skin. So it's all about improper fitting of the nail plate into the nail groove. So what will happen is that there will be abnormal growth of the nail into the periungual area or the periungual skin. So if we look on the sides of the nail here, the nail starts to grow into the sides of the toe. So it would grow into the periungual area with sharp pieces or spicules of nail that get in and grow in those areas of the skin. What will then happen is that those sharp spicules of nail will lead to an immune reaction and immune cells will enter into the area leading to inflammation. And then that inflammation and damage of the tissue may lead to subsequent infection. So some bacteria or fungal infection may get in to that area and cause infection. So what are the clinical features of an ingrown toenail? So if we were to look at the feet, the hallux or the big toe is actually going to be the most commonly affected toe. So we're often going to see a patient with problem in their big toe. And it again affects the sides of the toe. It's going to be the periungual area. So as I mentioned before, that's part of the pathophysiology. Spicules or sharp pieces of nail will, will grow into the sides of the toe. So we're going to see issues in the periungual area or the sides of the toe. So some of the findings we're going to see include erythema. So erythema is a redness. So we can see a redness on the sides of the toe and swelling. So we can see swelling or edema. So if you were to see on one side of the toe, especially the big toe, it's red, it's swollen. That could be a sign of an ingrown toenail. And especially if there's sharp pain. So often the patient will describe a sharp focal pain on the side of the toe, especially when they're ambulating or when they're walking and when they're weight bearing. So if they're standing on the toe, they feel a sharp pain on the side of the toe. That could also be a sign of an ingrown toenail as well. And in some cases, there can be purulence. So there could be some pus or drainage from the side of the toe. There could be crusting. So often crusting can be something that can be noted in an ingrown toenail. And then sometimes there can be tissue granulation and lateral nail wall hypertrophy. So those are all findings of an ingrown toenail. Again, it's going to be most commonly on the big toe, on the side of the big toe, and the patient's going to have erythema swelling and describe a sharp focal pain when they're walking or weight bearing. Those are going to be the most common findings. Now there are particular stages of an ingrown toenail and certain complications that can occur. So we break it down into three stages. Stage one is going to be where there is mild erythema, edema, and pain. So mild redness, mild swelling, and some pain. Stage two would be where we would see significant erythema, edema, pain. So the redness, swelling, and pain become more significant in stage two. And there could be some infection and drainage as well. So we start to see some pus coming out. So this would be considered stage two. And then stage three is going to have all the things in stage two, but also tissue granulation and hypertrophy of the lateral nail. So when we see this tissue granulation and hypertrophy of the lateral nail, that would be considered stage three. And there are multiple complications that can occur from an ingrown toenail if it's not treated or dealt with appropriately. Some of these include paronychia. So paronychia is an infection of the side of the nail. Cellulitis. So cellulitis is an infection in the skin. And osteomyelitis could also occur. So in some patients, especially susceptible patients, if there is an ingrown toenail, they can get an infection that seeds into the bone of their toe. 
So that could also occur in some patients that would be osteomyelitis, an infection of the bone. Now let's talk about how clinicians diagnose and treat an ingrown toenail. So the diagnosis is a clinical diagnosis. So it's going to be by clinical examination. And some of the treatments are going to include supportive treatments. So the patient would wait for the nail to grow out, for that sharp piece of nail or that sharp spicule of nail to grow out and resolve on its own. And some of those supportive treatments can include soaking feet and toenails in lukewarm salt water. So patients can soak their feet in lukewarm salt water for 20 to 30 minutes multiple times per day. This can help with reducing the pain and swelling in the toe that's being affected. So soaking feet repeatedly can help as the toenail grows out and resolves on its own. In certain cases though, surgery can be used, especially in cases where it's refractory, doesn't get better, or if the patient has multiple recurrences of an ingrown toenail. So this is what the toenail looks like before surgery and after surgery. So this is what would be considered a wedge resection. So the sides of the nail are actually completely removed and the nail will look like this. So it will reduce the risk of ingrown toenails in the future. And what's going to be most important here is going to be prevention of ingrown toenails. So if a patient has an issue with recurrent ingrown toenails, best to try to avoid these particular things. One of them is going to be that the patient should not clip their toenails very short. So patients, especially those that are susceptible to ingrown toenails, should not clip their toenails too short. They should not clip them like this. So they should not clip them in an arc and have the toenail too short on the side. It should be clipped straight across like this. So we leave the sides longer and not clipped in toward the nail groove. So that would help reduce the risk of ingrown toenails from occurring. And then the other important thing would be to find proper fitting footwear. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on ingrown toenails. If you found this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.